Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. This video is all about how do you have a plant yard sale so you can make $500, $1,000, even over $1,500. The first half of the video is more the technical piece explaining how you go about it. The second half is going to be more about selecting the plants to grow. A lot of you can already grow, so I'm going to put that towards the end of the video. In the video description, you will also see my old videos on how do you have a plant yard sale. That will explain things in more detail. I also will put in the video description how do you seed start everything I'm talking about. I've done hundreds of videos on seed starting. There's no point in me going over that again now. So let's go over the technical piece. If you want to subscribe, follow me on February 20th, 2023, in case you watch this in the future. At 12 p.m. I'm going to do a live Q&A public chat just on this topic so you can um, join the chat ask questions, I will answer them, I'll stay on for about an hour. The first question I get is, is this legal? And the answer is you really have to check with your city, check locally. Every place has different rules and regulations like government does, but most of the time you're allowed to have a garage sale, a yard sale, any kind of sale on your property, you're allowed to do it. Um, some places want you to have a tax ID, but you really do have to check with your local government, county government, et cetera, and see what you're able to do. So once you get that checked out, you feel comfortable having the plant yard sale, the question I get is how much can I charge per plant? You wanna charge somewhere between two and $4. That's a pretty fair price. You're gonna be growing the plants we'll talk about in the second half so that they're to a good size, people appreciate them, they wanna buy them. You don't wanna be priced like Home Depot, Lowe's, or Walmart at like $4 for like a single lettuce plant or $6 for an herb plant. I mean, the prices there are getting crazy. By having the plant yard sale, you're giving your customers great plants at a discount to where they normally buy them. You're gonna grow your plants in different size containers. I sell all these at my seed shop if you're interested in buying them. You can get the standard six cells. You grow a lot of things in there. Again, I'll be showing you the growth of different vegetables in these at the second part of the video. You can start them in larger containers, great for peppers, tomatoes, etc. Things where you'll be charging maybe two, three dollars, even four dollars a plant. You know, this basic two and a half inch container. Larger cells, which I like to, to grow in, I would sell these as a group of four. And then even bigger containers, depending on what you want to grow. The whole idea for today is I'm going to go over in that second part the basic plants that you would sell. You can certainly sell more, but we'll go over a general idea of what you would want to grow for your first plant yard sale. If you don't want to buy all this, you can use, um, you're going to need a flat, to, you know, to grow indoors. You can um, use a foil baking tray. You can get water bottles, cut them in half, poke holes in them, use them as containers, use yogurt containers. You can use whatever you want really to grow in. You are going to have to label everything, masking tape, black marker. This way people know what they're buying and you know what you're growing. In most places, you will have to start these indoors. You can see my grow lights right over there. The whole idea is to get plants that look great. People are going to buy them. I'm often asked, how much does it cost per plant to grow? So I consider these a unit. Like this would be a unit. This would be a unit. You know, that's how you're going to sell them. Generally, 20 cents to 40 cents a unit. That would be include the higher end, all your energy costs, calculating in your time spent, etc. But you can really get below that if you're reusing um, products, if you're buying in bulk. It's not as expensive as you think, but I just wanted to give you something fair to kind of calculate the cost. Even at 40 cents a unit, if you're selling them at two, three, and four dollars a plant, that's a huge profit. So it's definitely worth it. You can definitely make money. Next question I get is how do I get customers? Treat this just like a regular yard sale. When you go out in your neighborhood, you see signs advertising a yard sale. So you're going to want to pick a date. Let's just say it's the first weekend of May. That's going to be how you're going to plan how to grow. You're going to go back all the way up to 12 weeks for growing certain plants. We'll talk about herbs. Those are some of the first ones you start growing. You want to advertise on social media. So if you have Facebook, Instagram, etc., or however you communicate with people, tell your family, tell your friends um, that you're going to have a plant yard sale. You want to use social media a good two weeks to four weeks ahead of time so that people know that you're going to be selling in that first week of May. 
you're going to grow or you're going to sell on Saturdays and Sundays. Typical time that's great is just like 9 to 1 o'clock. Perfect amount of time to sell. Gardeners come out, buy their plants, they go to the gardens they like to plant. In the neighborhood, I recommend like Thursday night putting up your signs early in the morning so people leaving for work and coming in Thursday and Friday are going to see that you're going to have a plant yard sale. You could just do it for one day. You could do it for two days on that weekend, which I do recommend because people are busy and they show up at different times. And I do recommend doing it the following week also because you're going to have plants that maybe haven't matured yet, people that haven't um, heard about the plant yard sale. So you just do the same process again. And in that two week period, you should be able to sell just about everything you have. And again, you can make 500,000 over $1,500. If it's your first sale, maybe you have a goal. You just want to earn 250 bucks. So you want to sell about $300 worth of plants because you have to deduct your costs. And that's going to leave you with $250 that you can use to buy wood to build a frame bed. Maybe you buy a metal raised bed. Maybe you need trellising, seeds, um, I don't know, maybe peppermint oil and stuff for insect control. Or maybe you just need extra money to kind of pay the bills for that month. You can use your gardening skills to bring in a resource. And that resource, of course, is cash. And you can use it as you want. So as you're growing for yourself, for your garden, for food, you can grow additional plants to have that plant yard sale. And this really works. I haven't done this for a while. But years ago, 10, 15 years ago, I used to do this all the time. I would, let me just make sure, probably did this over a four or five year period. After that first year, people were looking forward to it and it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. So that's the other strategy. This is your first year doing it, let's just say. Word of mouth, you will begin to be accepted and wanted and loved in your neighborhood, in your community, because you're selling plants at a great price and people are happy to come to you. So it is going to work out a little bit of work to get started. The next question I get is, when do I start growing? And like I just said, you're going to start about 12 weeks before the plant sale and different plant varieties get started at different times. We'll talk about that shortly. What's most important is that you understand you want large plants. So maybe we're growing a little bit longer indoors, but we want plants that look healthy and people want to buy. You also have to include in that time frame a good seven to ten days to get your plants acclimated to the outdoors they are not used to the uv rays of the sun the wind temperature changes so we're growing them indoors they're kind of wimpy they haven't really experienced mother nature so you have to take them outside get them acclimated and growing also when you get them outside in that seven days ten days of getting sun they're going to grow even bigger and they're going to be healthier and they're going to look great. So you have to include that into your plan too. Now in many places we're going to have to start indoors because it's just too cold outside. Other places, um, maybe you have a greenhouse, you can start growing in a greenhouse or you know you can even grow outside if you're in a place where you're not getting freezing nights and the days are warm enough for the seeds to germinate. So there's different ways to do this. So the time frame is a guideline. Just use it as a basic guideline. I will include in the video description all the other videos that I did on having a plant yard sale. I did that about two years ago. Didn't get to finish the series with the actual selling because COVID came and we were all you know, in our houses for that. But those videos will give you some ideas. Again, also in the video description will be a link to my seed starting series for 2023. It will cover everything you need to know to grow in a grow light station like that's behind me and then you can also go to my channel and you can search oregano tomatoes peppers etc shows you how to grow them all right those are the general rules i guess or the general guidelines to have a plant yard sale you're going to sell the plants two to four dollars you're going to sell them by a unit they're going to cost you generally speaking 20 cents to 40 cents a unit you're going to pick a date you're going to count back 12 weeks that's when you're going to start growing different things and you're going to do this as an advertised yard sale, plant sale with signs in your neighborhood, social media. Do at least for one weekend, although I do recommend two weekends. That will get you started. And I think you will have a wonderful time and you're going to be really excited to just watch your plants go. When I used to do this, um, I could easily sell really 300, even 400 plants um, in one, one day, really. 
I'll also talk about some alternatives to selling too, in case you're in a place where you can do this without um, a lot of bureaucracy. Some places are gonna say like you need a nursery license. Most places won't. But I will talk to you about how you can sell these plants in other ways so that you can even make some more money. So now the plants, let me just show you right here. These are my pepper plants. They're, these are growing in the four cells. In theory, you could just grow these to size. You could sell just this, you know, four plants. However, you can see that I have two plants in here. I'm going to divide these in half when they get bigger. Anyway, right in here, there are 48 pepper plants. They were started, um, I don't know, maybe two weeks ago or something like that. They're going to grow inside eight to ten weeks. They're going to get divided. In this little flat, I have 96 plants that I can pot up into something like this sell easily for two dollars a plant if not three dollars a plant two dollars times 96 what is that 192 is that right three dollars a plant that's over 270 dollars just from a flat like this i also have plants growing in here uh, let me switch the cameras real quick these are different herbs, oregano, thyme, sage, some flowers and stuff like that. You can also grow those. So let's talk about the timing. So your plant sale is going to be around the first weekend of May. That's when frost is gone. People aren't going to want to come in a cold where they have to buy plants they can't plant because the frost is here. So you want to time the date around your last frost date. So herbs that you want to grow, first plant sale, and again, you can certainly grow different varieties. You want to seed start oregano, thyme, chives, lavender, rosemary, and sage. Those are wonderful herbs. They're the, typically your perennial herbs that will come back. They can actually take a cold. They can take a frost. They're really sturdy, but they might take 12 weeks to get to a good size that you can sell them, maybe even 14 weeks. So those are plants you would start early. Um, lavender, Rosemary grows really slowly, maybe 14 weeks ahead of time. And remember, you have to do a good 7 to 10 days to acclimate the plants to the outdoors. Let me just show you real quick some of the ways that I grow them. And again, check out the video description or go to my YouTube channel, and that will explain to you how to grow herbs and everything. So this is a cell of thyme, overseeded. These are probably, I don't know, maybe 10 weeks old. Overseeded, 10, 12 seeds in there. You can see how nice this plug of thyme is. You also want to make sure the plants don't coil in the seed starting mix. So you're always either potting up or you're planting these into containers that they grow for the 12 weeks, 10 weeks, 8 weeks, 6 weeks, and you just have beautiful root systems. You don't want to sell somebody a really tight root system. They're not going to be happy. My point is here is just one seed. Here's two seeds. Overseed your oregano, your thyme, and then you would pop this out, tear it down the middle, and it just gets potted up into a container like this. And right now it's about time to pot this up. It'll grow another week or two in here, get acclimated to the outdoors. You're going to have a beautiful, massive thyme plant that you can easily sell for three bucks. In that cell of six, if this was overseeded, I divide it in half, I have 12 plants. The time is ready, 12 plants times three, $36. I mean, that's just how quickly it adds up. You can also do discounts too. You can do like, if you're selling everything for $3, you could do whatever, four plants for 10 bucks or give some sort of discount. People like the discount. Your whole goal is to move a lot of plants and get to your goal of $250 or $500 or whatever your goal is. Here's just another example too of the overseeding. This is the overseeding of oregano, two seeds of oregano, um, I think one seed of oregano in there. You can see how the overseeding is better. Sage is a beautiful plant. Sage is a, an herb that actually this one can probably be ready in about 10 weeks. Um, just, just wonderful. I'm growing it in the four pack. I would just pop this whole thing out, put it into something. The root systems tend to get a little bit bigger, but you get the idea. So 10 to 12 weeks, we have oregano, thyme, chives, lavender, rosemary, and sage. Great herbs to get started. Next thing that you may want to think about are the pepper plants. Uh, here's an example of 
four pepper plants growing in these larger containers I sell at the seed shop. You could sell this whole four pack, I think, easily for five bucks. These are banana peppers. These have been growing for a while. I, I pruned them. This, these are actually for another video. But if you're growing your peppers this way, you get beautiful plants. People are like, ah, oh, I can get four pepper plants. Home Depot charges me $4 a plant. That would be 16 bucks at Home Depot or Lowe's. You're selling this for four, five, maybe even $6. Or when these get to a size like this, you're gonna pop them up into a bigger container. Maybe you let them grow two more weeks. They get even bigger, whatever, and you can price them according, accordingly. It's really up to you. Pepper plants, about 10 weeks before the plant sale. Super hots like ghost peppers and even habaneros, maybe even 12 weeks. They just tend to grow slowly. When you watch my videos, you'll see that I talk about planting into the garden, maybe eight weeks for peppers, 10 weeks for peppers, for tomatoes, maybe six weeks. You can put smaller plants into your garden. But for the plant sale, you want something that looks a little bit bigger, a little bit better. So peppers, eight to 10 weeks, hot peppers, you know, 10 weeks, a little bit longer, something around there. But you want them to get to size. And this is a perfectly nice size plant, you know, for somebody to come to your plant sale and buy. Tomato plants, I would grow the same way. I would do a mix of cherry tomatoes, slicing tomatoes, and then other varieties that you like. Um, except for tomatoes, they're gonna be pretty much to size in about eight weeks. So you can start them eight weeks early, acclimate them, they're gonna be a pretty good size. If you want bigger tomatoes, because if you grow them bigger, like if you get a plant that's maybe two feet tall, in a bigger pot, maybe you're selling that for five or six dollars versus your two or three dollars for the smaller plant. That's really up to you. But people always want cherry tomatoes. They always want um, beefsteak tomatoes. That's what they look for is beefsteak. So I would recommend that variety. Other slicing tomatoes. And then you could pick varieties of cherries that maybe are different colors, different shapes, different kind of slicers. Heirloom tomatoes are always big sellers like um, the Brandywine varieties are uh, or were sought out often when I used to do the plants out. Everybody wanted brandy wines. They wanted different color brandy wine tomatoes. So you can kind of pick what you want to grow. If you're just getting started, minimum a red slicing tomato. That's about the size of a baseball. The red beef steak and a cherry tomato. And people will buy those. The more varieties you have, the more plants you're going to buy. So that's up to you. So peppers, tomatoes, eggplant, you can grow sort of like peppers if you want to do some different kind of eggplant. That's great too. People look for that. Mixed into that are your warm weather herbs like uh, dill, uh, basil, any plant that wants to grow in a warm weather that's not frost tolerant. I used to grow six or eight different varieties of basil. Lemon basil, lime basil, cinnamon basil, Thai basil, standard you know green leaf basil, purple basil, purple uh, ruffle basil, they were huge sellers, and I would sell them for $2 a plant. They were, used to be um, just in little six or eight ounce cups. That's the other tip I would have. If you don't want to, you know, buy the supplies from me or different places, you can go to your grocery store, look for cups that are about six or eight ounces, poke holes in them. You can use those. Basil was a huge seller. Basil, you definitely want to start eight weeks early. You want them to get to size. Um, indoors, they're going to germinate. I like to use a heat mat for my peppers and for my basil just to get them germinating. But a nice size basil plant is going to be an easy two or three dollars. So you got your kind of warm weather herbs about eight weeks before the plant sale. The next thing you have are like your cool weather crops. So this is a four pack of lettuce. Nobody's really going to want to pay three or four dollars for a single lettuce plant. You can you know, almost get that at the grocery store. But you can sell this four pack pretty easily for four dollars. They get four plants, that's a dollar a plant. They're gonna think that's a good deal. Lettuce, you wanna start about six to eight weeks indoors. Kale, collards, about eight to 10 weeks indoors. Spinach, about eight weeks indoors. And when I say indoors, it's important because if you're trying to grow these outside, let's just say you have frost that, it, let's just say you don't have frost and your temperatures at night maybe get down to the 40s. If you seed everything I'm talking about outside, they're gonna take three times as long at least to germinate in here because it's still cold out. The seeds will still germinate. 
they're still going to grow but with those colder nights and colder temperatures they're going to grow more slowly so you have to incorporate that into your plan if you are going to be growing outside not in a protected greenhouse you may need longer for your lettuce plants to mature so what i'm talking about is indoors you can also do kind of a mix you can start your seeds indoors let them germinate for seven days they break the surface and then you can put them outside into your climate that's not going to get a frost or a freeze and you could grow them that way so there's a lot of different ways to grow them that's why i'm kind of giving you guidelines for when to start these plants now in that mix you could do broccoli cabbage and cauliflower and those plants are going to need eight to ten weeks to really get to a size that people are going to want to buy and you're going to want to sell these plants typically the cool weather crops in groups of four finally for the cool weather crops you can do peas in a simple you know six flat like this this is the basic flat full of soil put the peas in there peas only need about five days indoors to germinate about a week's worth of growth indoors and then a week outside so in about three weeks you can have nice little pea plants about this size in a six pack sell that for two or three bucks people will be fine with that and i think you get the idea some plants are going to be sold as a single plant two three four dollars some people uh, some plants will be sold sold as a four pack or a six pack for two three four dollars that's really up to you the next plants that fit into there are really your cucumbers your squash zucchini and winter squash and you want to start those in larger containers they grow really fast they get massive root systems but you don't want them sitting in your containers you don't want any of your plants sitting in containers to the point that they're flowering that's not a healthy transplant so for the cukes the zooks the squashes etc about four weeks to five weeks before you go to sell. So these will be sitting in here. They're gonna germinate in about five days. They germinate quickly, especially in a warm home. You're gonna give them that week outside to get acclimated to the sun and all that. You're gonna have beautiful cucumbers, zucchini squash, and winter squash plants to sell. And you can sell these easily, two, three, four dollars a plant, depending on what you wanna do. I would sell a basic green zucchini a eight inch cucumber like market more or something like that a pickling cucumber like national pickling maybe a yellow squash i would do um, butternut squash your winter squash and i would do acorn squash and that is enough to kind of give you a good mix of plants to sell make some money kind of get your feet wet and then you can decide to uh, expand grow bigger grow more you know the following year so again, please um, subscribe. You will get notification of the uh, February 20th, 12 p.m. Eastern Time Q&A that I'm going to do on growing, you know, growing plants for a plant yard sale. Let me just check real quick, make sure I got everything on my list here. Yeah, I think I covered it. So if you are in a county or you're in a city or you get the right licensing, whatever you have to do, you can also sell at flea markets. You can sell at um, religious functions. And for instance, I used to have a giant near me where I used to live. It was a shopping center. They would do the annual neighborhood flea market there. You got a parking lot space, 20 bucks. And I would just bring 30, 40 flats. I was using baking trays of plants just like this, all labeled with masking tape. Sometimes I put a sign on there, didn't even label them. Put them into the parking spot and I would sell... I mean, pretty easily, two, 300 plants, even 400 plants. I made over $800 at times, and I was only selling them for $2 a plant, sometimes a dollar a plant, and I was giving a discount. And that was maybe, who probably 10 years ago, um, maybe 15 years ago. It works. You can do this. So this is the basic guideline. Check out the video description for more details about a plant yard sale. I will put in those old videos there. Again, when you see the difference in maybe what I'm talking about timeline-wise, just keep in mind, I'm just giving you kind of, you know, a general time frame. Also, 
check out my channel for just about seed starting everything I talked about in the video description. I will put the playlist for starting seeds indoors for 2023. All right, I think that covers it. Please check out my seed shop if you want to buy any of this at therustedgarden.com. And please subscribe. And if you have questions, meet me on February 20th in the live chat and I will answer your questions. Thanks for watching.